This week's NetLogo assignment is to create a flag that has a triangle in it. You all have been already assigned a specific flag and what I'm looking at now is this page, the Wikipedia page and you can see that there's three on this part right here. There's right here we're looking at making this triangle and you can see these are very similar triangles right here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a flag that has two triangles in it so you have two ideas on how to make it. I'm going to create the flag of East to more. Now the other thing is you have been assigned flags that will have stripes in them so you need to create the stripes as well but since we've done that two weeks ago there's a video that you could go back if you need help on creating the stripes there. Again, the specific grade for this is 50 points. Uh, it's broken down in the Google Classroom to show you how many points you get for each one. Pay close attention to how you set up your proportions because, again, if you have stripes on there, those stripes need to be easily divisible by a whole number so you can create equally wide stripes. There's been an issue with that. Um, make you get uh, two points for the first three colors you use if you use the RGB values. If you don't use the RGBs, you just use the color name, you only get one point for color. You get five points for each of the either creating the vertical stripes or the horizontal stripes depending on which flag you've been assigned. Uh, there is a total of 16 points for creating the diagonal lines to create your triangle and again you have to attach uh, a image to your email. It needs to be JPEG, the GIF, or a PNG file and each person needs to email the assignment in even though you're working in pairs each pair so you're working in pairs on this assignment but each person has to send in an email that contains in the body of the email it contains your code your net logo code and an image attached again is a, a JPEG a GIF or a PNG so again the flag I want to show you how to work how to, to create is the flag of East Timor so again uh, you have a Wikipedia link to whatever flag you've been assigned once you click on that Wikipedia link, it will take you to the flag. And again, we're looking at these proportions here. And it would be wise of you also to kind of plan ahead. I've already read through the description of this flag. And this right here ends up being half the flag value. So as long as I have a even number for my number of pixels going across, that'll be easily divisible and then this right here this end right here is about it's one-third of the way across so in my planning what I want to think about is making sure that my number whatever number goes across here is divisible by three and again I'm looking at the proportions this is a one to two proportion so for every one whatever it is this way one foot one inch one meter one patch I have to go two of the same units this way so one meter this way would be two meters this way if I did ten patches this way I'd have to do twenty patches this way I'm not gonna pick twenty because twenty is not easily divisible by three with a whole number so again we need to pick something that's a whole number because we can't make half of a patch color so you can't say color 0.5 patch it's all the little patch and again a patch is a square so the first step I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to copy this I'm doing right click copy the image and I'm going to bring it to a I'm going to use paint but you can use whatever software you're used to and I'm going to stretch this out again it's 1 to 2 so if I went 30 this way this would be 15 and that would be okay except when I divide it in half I'm going to have 7.5 so I don't want that 
for my y-axis I want to go ahead and if I if I do it times 3 1 times 3 is 30 2 times 3 is 60 so these are kind of the dimensions I want to set my flag to alright it's a little off there alright so there we go so now I'm looking at my flag and I need to come up with a plan of which what I want to color first and what I want to color last so looking at this I'm going to look at it as a red background then if I create this yellow triangle and then the black triangle and then put the star on last that's probably the way I'm going to do it so and the reason for that is if I did the black triangle first and when I created this yellow one well the yellow would cover up the black and then if I did the background the red would cover up everything else I did so this is one of those things I'm trying to get you to think about um, and math, your math, your orders of operation, what you want to come first, second, third, fourth, and why you want them to be in that order. So knowing that I'm going to set up my world to, uh, I want my x value to be from, I want it to be 60, and again, because of we're starting our patch, our first patch will be 0, 0, instead of 0 to 60, because that would actually be 61, I'm going to go 0 to 59. So I'm going to bring up my net logo. I'm going to go ahead and click on the unlock button here. So I'm unlocking it. I'm going to right click up here in this top left green corner. Again, I'm right clicking. If you don't have a right click button then the two fingers on the touchpad will bring up this menu. I'm going to say create button and in here where it says commands I'm going to type in the word setup S-E-T-U-P all small letters all squished together it's not set and then up it's set up. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to go ahead and click on this so I clicked on there you see the little squares popped up so I can drag it to where I want to. I did that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the world which is a big black square and I'm going to drag it over this way and then I'm going to go ahead and click on my lock there. Now again the setup is in red because it doesn't know what the word setup means but I'm going to go ahead and change that. I'm going to go ahead and create a procedure called setup so I went down to where it says net logo code clicked on that it expanded this down. Hopefully this is going pretty fast now that we've done this three times in the last three weeks. So hopefully this is getting to be faster. We're going to type setup, S-E-T-U-P. I'm going to hit enter five or six, seven times. I just want a lot of space in between there um, so that it's easier for you to see. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my screen a little bit so you can see the writing a little bit easier going back up underneath setup and I'm gonna do clear dash all all one word all together no space in between and again that gets rid of everything and starts the gives us a fresh new world and now we want to set our world to the our proportion so I'm gonna do semicolon semicolon again the semicolon is just for us to read in our code the computer doesn't read this at all but I like having little headings to each of the blocks of code that we do so that way you know what each block does. So I'm going to say create flag proportions and here's where I actually use the code to redo that. I'm going to say resize dash and again the dash is the minus sign dash world and for this I'm gonna go ahead and do a space and my minimum X value has to be zero and again I want to go zero to I want to have 60 patches wide so I gotta go zero to 59 and then going up and down in my Y axis in the Y direction I want to go zero to 30 sorry 1 to 30 which would be zero to 29 this way 
And then uh, this is where you get your grade. I'm going to say flag is, and you got to type in whatever your dimension is, 1 to 2. That's the proportions, I should say. And then in parentheses, I'm going to say times 30 is, and then so that'd be 30 to 60. That's our proportions there. So for every, and again, that would reduce to 1 to 2 but that's what I've set up and then now then I want to set my patch size. So I'm going to say set dash patch dash size and I'm going to do 20 and again that's 20 pixels by 20 pixels so each of my little patches each of my little background squares is going to be 20 patches by 20 patches or sorry 20 pixels by 20 pixels I hit recompile code I come up here and we'll see if everything's working out the way it should. And it looks that way. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my screen. Oops. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on setup. And I can see that this is way too big. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change my patch size because my computer screen is not big enough to hold all this. So I'm going to go ahead and change this instead of 20, I'll change it to 10 and now each patch size is 10 by 10 pixels. I'm going to hit recompile and scroll up here, hit setup and now I have something a little bit more reasonable to deal with. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and enlarge my screen so you can see my uh, my code a little bit easier. Now my next thing is the flag has a red background. We'll go back there and look at it. So there's a red background so I want to do that first. So I'm going to say make background red and by now you should be getting used to this. We've got to ask patches, P-A-T-C-H-E-S have to have a starting square bracket which is next to the letter P. Hit enter twice ending square bracket. So everything we're asking our patches to do needs to be in between these this set of brackets. So I'm just going to say set P color, which stands for patch color, red. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and hit compile. Recompile, I should say. I'm going to hit setup, and now I have a red background. Alright, fantastic. Now the next thing I need to do is make this triangle. And to figure out my values, I'm going to go ahead and go to my image that I brought up here, on, I created on, on paint. And the reason I use paint is because it has a scale on the sides here. So looking at this, I can see that the end of this is halfway across the flag. So I'm going to look at my points here and I'm going to use that slope intercept form that we've been dealing with a little bit the last two weeks. So this starting point down here in the bottom corner, this is 0, 0. And then where it ends, right here, is going to be, well, and I'll just make this a little bit easier, we'll just say 30 for now. So this is in the x direction, 30. And then here is 15. And this again is in the y direction, going from here to here, because again our dimensions is 30 across this way, 60 across this way. This is halfway on our x-axis, halfway on our y-axis. So I'm going to set up this. And again, we have the slope, which is that m value, equals the rise over the run. So the rise is how far it goes up to how far it goes over. So that's going to be, goes up 15 and 0, and then 30 minus 0, which ends up being 15 over. 30, which hopefully you can see that we can 
divide both the top and the bottom by 15. 15 will go into 15 once. 15 goes into 30 twice. So our slope here is 1 to 2, meaning for every 1 we go up, we go over 2, and that's where we'll be on the line. We go up 1, over 2, back on the line. So that's our slope, and that's what we're going to end up using, similar to what we did last week with the uh, with the number 5 flag. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to create our diagonal now that I've got that piece of information. And I'm going to say uh, make yellow triangle. So again we're going to start off with ask patches. going to hit uh, make a solid uh, starting square bracket, hit enter twice, do an ending square bracket, and now here's where I got to ask it a question. I'm going to say if the PY core equals, and again we want one half so we can do one, we got to have a space here so it knows it's dividing, one divided by two times PX core. And then off on the side I'm going to write what this is. We're just doing y equals one half x. That's what we have right there. And again, once we put these semicolon semicolon in there, the computer doesn't read this. We're just going to write that in there so we know what it is for ourselves. I need to end my uh, parentheses there. I should have done that before I did the code. That comments in there. I'm going to do a starting square bracket, hit enter twice, an ending square bracket, and again if this is true we want to set P color yellow. Yellow. Let me spell it right there. I'm going to hit recompile and you see it makes a dotted line all the way across which is we're on the right track. We want, our, we want this dotted line to stop right there. There's a couple ways we could do this. But the other thing I want to show you is if we change our... If we change this to a greater than symbol, we're going to get half of our... our we're going to get half of the flag colored in yellow. And now then what we're going to add is a code that makes we'll make a line going across this way and that way we get our yellow triangle. Alright, so I'm going to go back to this and then I'm going to say and PY core is less than though. I'm going to do the same thing I did there. One divided by two, space in between but here's the other part of that. I need a negative sign in front of there because again our slope is going to be running downhill so that means it's a negative slope. So in PY core is less than negative one half divided by two times our PX core plus and then our maximum value there was 29 and I'll show you what all this does when we do this. This will give us our little triangle. So don't do this but I just want to show you kind of what we did. I did this right here. Let me go ahead. If I do this part it's going to cut out our other part of our, we're going to make half of our flag but it's going to be the other half yellow. So you see when I had this going the other, this is starting up here going down that's what that did and then when I combine both of these this is how we get our little triangle. Okay. So that's our first triangle. Now we're going to look at making our next triangle. And again, you don't you most of you probably you everybody only has one triangle, but I want to 
show you how to make this two different times so you get an idea. So I'm going to say make black triangle. And very similar, I'm going to say ask patches. Do a starting square bracket, hit enter once, do an ending square bracket, and I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to say if and now I gotta figure out my P and my my PX core values and my PY core value. So I'm gonna go back up here and now I'm looking at this point. So from here to here going up from Z this goes up 15 so from here to here is 15 and then from here to here is 20. So for every 15 I go up that's going to be my top number. So I go up 15 and then I'm going over and since this is one-third I'm going over 20. So the, this would reduce. This is my other sl slope value. This would reduce. If I could divide both sides by 5, this ends up being 3 over 4. So I'll see if I can get this line made. For every three I go up, one, two, three, I go over four, one, two, three, four, and I'm back there. So that's the slope of my line. So for my black triangle, I'm going to go ahead and add that. So I'm going to say PY core is greater than three divided by, and I'm putting spaces in between each one of these, 4 times PX core. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that for now. We'll come back and change this when you see the line that we'll end up creating. Now then, if this is true, then i got to do what's in between a set of brackets. So if each patch is being asked this, if these value, if this is a true statement, then it's going to do what's in these brackets, which is going to be set P color black. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and recompile. And we'll see that it'll change that part. Like again, so here's the line we created with that inequality. And anything greater than that in value ends up being black. So now then to end it, we're going to do what we did up here. We're going to add that other part of the line with the triangle. So I'll end it. I'm going to say and PY core and the sign is less than, again that's the one next to the letter M. I'm going to do negative 1 space divided by space, sorry not 1, negative 3 divided by space 4 times PX core and again, just like we did up there, since we're starting, since we want that line to cross up there where it goes, where the y value is 29, we got to do a plus space and then 29. And now, if all this is true, if this is true and this is true for the patch coordinate, it's going to end up making it black. Now we have our triangle inside a triangle. And then the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this really quickly because those of you who have been assigned a additional item um, to put on your flag, you've probably already done this. And what I'm going to end up doing is adding this star. So to do that, I'm going to I'm going to do my user comment. I'm going to say create white star. Hit, and then I'm going to say create turtles one. I'm going to do a starting bracket, hit enter twice, an ending bracket, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this and show you what we've done and then we're going to modify it. So I've done this and you see right here, there's a, at the bottom left hand corner that's patch zero zero, so by default the turtles are, are created and made this little ran, random color 
but there are triangles and, uh, at, uh, and they're created in the center of patch zero zero. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up, make it bigger, and then we're going to go from there. So looking at the flag again, I'm going to go back to the paint, and this is at a value, the center of this is about a value of 6 and 15. So I'm going to say 15 and 6. Actually, it's going to be 14 because it's one patch less, and 5, one patch less. So going to go ahead and add that to my code. I'm going to add the things I want my... So I'm going to say set shape. I want it to be a star. Now you can't say sh like set shape dinosaur. There's only a, a small list of shapes that it knows already. So I'm going to say set shape there. I'm going to do set color because again it makes a random color but my star needs to be white. I'm going to set the size. We need a bigger. I'm going to say set size to, and I'm going to make up a number. I'm going to say maybe uh, 8. I don't know. Probably have to come back and adjust that. And then here's where I'm going to set my X and Y location. I said I want it to be, let me go back and check. I already forgot. So on here it's showing 6 for our X coordinate. But again, since we're starting numbering at zero, we want to make that one less. So I'm going to say five, and then this is going to be 14. So our X is going to be five, our Y is going to be 14. So X is five, Y is 14. I've done that. I'm going to go back up here, recompile code, and hopefully, hopefully that looks about where it needs to be. Um, if we're using the NetLogo version on the computer, we'd be able to rotate this star so it has the same orientation as this, but we don't, so we can't. All right. So the very last, uh, I've got two more steps. One of them is I want to go ahead, and you can see this is kind of a zigzag line, so I'm going to change the resolution here. So I'm going to use some math again. So I'm going to multiply everything by 10 or divide it by 10. So we're going to change the resolution by a factor of 10. So I'm going to go back up to where I resize my world and I'm going to add a 9. So this goes from 0 to 599, which would be 600. Then I'm going to add a 9 here. From Instead of going to 30, we're going to go to 300. Again, that's 1 to 300 or 0 to 299. It's the same thing. Since I've made this 10 times bigger, my world 10 times bigger, so it'll still fit on my screen and have the resolution we want, I'm going to set the patch sizes down by a factor of 10. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. And now then i got to do the same thing with these two values right here. I gotta, I gotta go ahead and add a nine there, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a nine here. Oops, a nine there. All right. I'm gonna hit recompile code, and it's taking a little bit of time to do this because it's got to calculate, and now we can see. Our resolution is there, oh, but look at our star. We forgot to change our values for our star. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. And we created one turtle, so... Now, I could change this to 80, and it actually should be 79. Um, but that's all right for our purposes for this. Just giving you the general idea. So every once in a while, we're off by a set of numbers or something like that. So that's looking a little bit better, although it looks like we need to move the star up just a tad. Okay, so that looks pretty reasonable. I could probably move my star up and over a little bit, but that is okay. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and add my colors. Now, again, this is the RGB values, the red, green, blue that we've talked about. Most of the Wikipedia sites have those values. But if it doesn't, your friend is Google, and you can Google the RGB. So I, I Google right here RGB values of East Timor flag, 
and sure enough there's a website that has it so I'm gonna look at there's the the, the three colors I'm dealing with actually I should say four because there's red yellow black and white and it gives me the RGB values for each one so instead of saying red I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this I'm gonna copy this this is my red green blue value again the maximum value for this is 255 the minimum is zero I'm gonna go ahead and copy this I'm gonna go back to my net logo where my code is I'm gonna highlight the red paste this over now this has to be in square brackets so I'm getting rid of those square brackets and each number instead of having a comma in between it, it just needs a space so when I recompile the code here now then when I make my the red there it will be the same red color as the flag hit setup and you'll see the flag is a little darker red there. I'm going to go ahead and see what my other values are. So for my yellow, I'm going to use these. So where I say yellow, again square bracket at the beginning and the end of the sequence with a space in between each number. And then I want to look at my black is zero 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 so that's black already and it doesn't list my white which is probably just a white star like it is alright so recompile setup and you should see that turns a little yeah, a little different color yellow all right, I'm going to go ahead and copy this image. I'm going to take it to my paint. Not that you guys need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and paste it on top of this and see how close we got to matching it. I'm going to move it so it looks like we're pretty close except for that orientation of the star, and the star needs to be a tad bit bigger. Okay, so again, my suggestion after you finish this is you need to, I would, if I were you, go ahead and export it using this net logo. You can, that way it will save it. And if you need to come back and change something, you'll have the code saved. Um, and you're, the other, to, assign, to submit this, you need to copy and paste the code into an email, the body of an email and then you need to include a screenshot PNG JPEG or uh, GIF of your flag being finished there and again this is worth 50 points although you're working in groups of two each person needs to email the assignment to me to get credit again if you have questions I have office hours Monday through Friday from 1:30 to 3 so please come by if you need help